so we can say that the state of exception is the what we call the dispositive uh, by means of which Schmidt responds to any affirmation of a possible human action completely independent from the law. No relationship with the law. Completely anomic. I will always, always, now on, I will always employ this term anomic, anomic and very simple, just mean, just mean lawless. Uh, Nomos is the Greek word for law, anomic is a uh, state of lawless. Now, also, just to make a, a last proof of this, uh, the fact that Schmidt is really responding to Benjamin, because now we better understand uh, uh, his idea of founding the state of exception on the decision, on the sovereign decision. Because this is a countermeasure, a counter movement eh, to the Benjamin critique, because the Benjamin distinction of a low positive and the law conserved violence perfectly corresponds to the distinction between constituent power and constituted power, which the other first, the present book, according to Schmidt, grounded the possibility of the state of exception. Precisely in order to respond to this critique, and now Schmidt takes a third element, the, the decision, the sovereignty. Of this point is clear, I'm going very perhaps too much quickly. Then, and perhaps uh, the decisive document in this uh, file, this relationship, this debate between Ben and Schmidt, is certainly the eight theses on the concept of history, which, which you know, perhaps Ben wrote some months before that time. So in the eight thesis, I quote, then it's right, the tradition of the oppressed teaches us that the state of exception between Christian Marx in which we live is, has become the rule. We must reach a conception of history which corresponds then we will have in front of us our task, which is to produce the real state of exception, the effective, virtually state of exception, the no more quotation marks. And this will uh, straighten and reinforce our position in our struggle against fascism. So let's try to briefly as this uh, last event of response to Schmidt theory. And the fact that now the state of exception becomes the rule, it became by the statement that here, then is the first one to bear it, is not simply a radicalization of other present. Uh, already the origin of the drama, they spoke of the indecidability of the state of exception, etc., etc. Of course, both Benjamin and Schmidt, and we must not, never forget, we are in 1940, so Benjamin's diagnosis is the state of exception is the rule, which we believe is the rule, was a fact. So they, had, they were facing a situation, not only German as a tool, but in all the world, because, because uh, so in my book I make a kind of a brief history of the state of exception. So what we had in the Second World War, that each state declare the state of exception in order to cope with the problem of war, in the relationship between the war and the state of exception. By the way, what is strange that also Switzerland, which had nothing to do with it, most important, <laughs> declared the most severe state of exception of all Europe. <laughs> Incredible rule of state exception. Anyone could be imprisoned, uh, deported, uh, but no reason, because there was no danger. They were not there. <laughs> so, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> And it was a big debate, it was a very interesting. So, so, so it's a, it was a fact, but what was important, I think, in, ben, in reading this Benham statement as a response to Schmidt, many, many days, years after, 
is that what Schmidt could not, could, could in any case accept was the fact that state exception and uh, the normal order overlapped and coincided. Because his theory of founding the way the normal order through the state of exception, because this was his theory, was grounded on the possibility of distinguish them. But if you cannot, if you can no more distinguish state of exception and normal case, this possibility collapses. And the uh, Schmidt theory, very sophisticated theory, in order to keep a strange paradoxical relationship both of the south and inside between the state of exception and normal order, can't work anymore. In a way, when the, if the rule coincides with the exception, then the rule divorces itself. So I think that we can now try to summarize a little the wager in this debate. The wager in this debate between Ben and Schmidt, perhaps now more clearly defined, this debate takes place in the same zone of error, of lawlessness, that on one side must be kept at any price in relationship with the juridical order, and on the other, Ben must be freed, on the contrary, from this relation. What is at stake in this zone of enemy is the very relationship between violence and law. It is to say, the status of violence as a cipher of human action. To Schmidt's gesture that tries each time to reinscribe the violence in the juridical context, Benjamin responds by ensuring to violence in the form of pure revolutionary violence in existence outside any juridical order. But the interesting thing is that for some reason that we have to understand, the fight for anarchy, for lawlessness, for this zone of anarchy, seems to be for Western politics and for Western juridical tradition as decisive as for Western metaphysics was the gigantomachia verite socia, giant struggle about being spirit of potential and beginning of science. To pure being, to pure existence as a metaphysical wager corresponds here pure violence as the ultimate political object the ontotheological strategy that tries to capture being in the logos, in the language, corresponds the strategy of exception which must establish and conserve the relationship between violence and law. It is as if both law and logos language were in need of an anonymous or a, a logic zone of suspension in order to ground their reference to world and life. Law seems to be able to exist only by grasping and lawlessness, in the same way as language can only exist by grasping the law and wisdom. In both cases, the conflict concerns an empty space. On one hand, enemy, the juridical vacuum, the juridical void, and on the other, pure being, being void of any real determination. For the juridical order, this empty space is precisely the state of exception, as its constitutive dimension. 